Welcome to the Veterans Cafe podcast, where we talk about issues surrounding veterans and soldiers, as well as current events in the world. Sometimes we interview guests and organizations, but more than anything, we are here for you. Welcome to another episode of the Veterans Cafe podcast. I'm Wes. I'm Tracy. And first off, let us go ahead and apologize. I know we missed a week in there. I was off at a uh, at an Army school, so I was unable, although I did try, I was unable to get that episode up. Um, so we do apologize for that. Um, however, we are back on our sort of our regular schedule, right? So today we're actually recording on Wednesday late in the afternoon because it is our hope that far down in the future, we're talking a couple months away, we want to try and start doing at least once a month a sort of live broadcast thing, maybe over like Google Hangouts. We're trying to work all this out so that we can actually start getting you guys involved because, you know, we talk a lot about you you messaging us, you getting involved with us in whatever way that you can. So, you know, we got to figure if we can do it live and you guys can actually call in, chat with us, something like that, then that'll probably be a really good way for us to make that happen at least once a month. We don't plan on doing it every show, every episode, but... It is something we want to start doing occasionally. Well, yeah, Wednesday has been working out for us. Um, With the exception of last week, um, we've been able to upload um, like every Wednesday for this year. So it's been awesome. Um, So what we're thinking of is probably staying with Wednesdays, right? We might even play around a little bit with like the live feature on Facebook, you know, just to see like, I don't know, maybe if you just want to check out Wes like editing or something. I don't know. I'm thinking of something. It might be kind of fun, but that will just play into hopefully you'll be able to call us. Um, you know, we'll let you know in advance, right, when this is going to happen. So that way you can uh, literally join the conversation because that's what we're hoping to be able to do one day. We're also hoping to, to be at a point where we're more interactive on the Facebook page. So um, anyway, so we, we have uh, some things in mind. Yeah, we definitely have some things in the work. And that's why at, that's actually why you're getting this episode a little bit later than you normally would. You know, we always say at the end of the show that you can wake up on Wednesday and you have your episode. And of course, here we are at 630 in the afternoon on Wednesday and we're recording the episode but again, it's because this is when we plan on doing this live thing. when We do decide to do it down the road. So that's kind of what we're going to start sticking to. We're still going to release the episodes on Wednesday. They're going to be late in the afternoon. So if you don't get it in the afternoon on Wednesday, you'll have it Thursday morning. So starting going forward. So yeah, and Wednesday's working for us. So, uh, you know, hopefully that will work out for you guys, too, when we get to that point. But um Anyway, I mean, let, let us know what your thoughts are. You know, I mean, it, what, you, what you think, like if you're interested in reaching out for one, right? And then if you are re- interested in reaching out, you know, uh, is Skype, you know, the way to go? I don't know. I mean, there's just so many different ways that people could do it now. I mean, there's like Snapchat and there's like all sorts of things that, I don't know, maybe our listeners might be more interested in. So. Yeah, I mean, my first, my first huge thought was um, something like Google Hangouts just because, People can both be involved like in it live, you know, they can be in the in the chat room with us with the video and everything and sort of get involved with the discussion live that way. But I mean, we do have Skype. We do have different ways that we can do it. So uh, you haven't played with Facebook live yet. That's actually pretty fun. I don't think you have yet. I haven't at all. I don't I don't know anything about it. The only reason I know it exists is because we have a, a mutual friend on Facebook that. That seems yeah. to do it all the time. Yeah. It's and so it's funny cute. because he like, he goes, all right, you guys want me to go live? And then there's like this build up, <laughs> and then he goes live and then, you know, and he, he does this thing. So that's the only reason I really know about it. So that's all I, I know you. about it at the moment. But, but that is something we plan on doing and come, going forward in the future. Um, at some point, a couple months down the road, like we said, we'll come out with a release date, you know, the date we plan on doing it for the first time. And we'll make sure that you guys know, we'll just keep reminding you every week. We'll let you know exactly when we're going to do it. But also coming up um, in the next couple of weeks, we have some some pretty awesome shows we feel like that are coming up because we have an organization that we're going to be talking about who's going to talk a little bit about um, a benefit that you've probably never even heard of. So that'll be awesome to have them on the show. And we also have another show that we want to talk about um, TBI, which is kind of a big thing, not just in the army and the military right now, but I mean, even like the NFL, the soccer, all these guys are talking about it right now because it's we're starting to see the physical impact it has on people. And we actually had someone reach out to us who had a very unique and probably one of the more extreme experiences that you can have with traumatic brain injury. So 
we're uh, really looking forward to having him on the show and telling his story and kind of getting a little bit into this topic as well, in case you're interested, because we know it's kind of a big thing right now with IEDs, everything we're having to deal with overseas. So we got a lot of uh, good shows lined up for you going forward in the future. So we're excited about that as well. Uh, speaking about... Um you know, just like overseas and, you know, um, things going on. Uh, just today, we saw that there's a new metal that's been released. I, for one, I'm not to sound too girly, but I think it's pretty. I like orange. <laughs> Aside from it being aesthetically pleasing, <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty significant, in my opinion, because it, it really says that we're back in Iraq. You know, this the... I think a lot of people knew that already, though. Yeah, but I mean, this is sort of the official, because everything ended, right? It was totally over. We were totally out. And now all of a sudden, in case you haven't read, there is a campaign ribbon again for Iraq and and as well as Syria for those Mm -hmm. who have served in Syria. And of course, this also includes the the remote airspaces and uh, waters around those areas. Um, But it's, of course, the Inherent Resolve Campaign Medal. Mm-hmm. which Inherent Resolve is obviously the operation name of what's going on over there right now. But the fact that um, President Obama has now signed in this executive order bringing forward a new campaign medal for it, I mean, that pretty much officially said, I mean, I know we're there. I know we've been sending soldiers there. I know things have been ramping up again, but now there's a campaign medal. And, of course, if you read it, it says anyone who served in this area – on or after June 15, 2014, earns the medal, and before a terminal date to be prescribed by the Secretary of Defense. Mm-hmm. So, again, you know, this is something yeah. with no end in sight kind of thing. So, am I, you know, you know looking at this, we're, we're officially there. And from this point, you could probably only expect the numbers to continue to grow as, as ISIS is becoming a bigger threat and everything going on over there becomes, I don't know, hopefully not worse, but... Well, I definitely, uh, I mean, I've, I'm like the, like the big nerd who follows like, you know, all the social media DOD sites, right? Because I'm always looking for imagery, mine and then others. And like, you know, I have like my military photographers that I'm like obsessed with and I'm like fangirling over all the time. But I have been reading quite a bit. It's, in been, all of- it's been really bad this week, <laughs> by the way. It's, my fangirling? Yeah. yeah. I almost fainted twice and vomited in the whole bit. It's but anyway. been like Bieber fever. <laughs> But for like (laughs) military military photographers, photographers, yeah, (laughs) I know. Anyway, so um, but I have read in all these like, you know, multiple DOD sites that, um, you know, troops are, you know, being mobilized and you're getting ready and blah, blah, blah. And I'm not sharing any information that's not out there anyway. So um, anyway, it's definitely interesting. I I think, you know, as I say before, I think we're living in an interesting time. Um, I don't know. I mean, you know, I know some soldiers that are, you know, that are taking pictures and, you know, in the surrounding areas that we've discussed and the imagery is beautiful. And I know that there's a lot of great training happening. So we'll just see what lies ahead. Right. With this beautiful ribbon that's orange, which I think is so pretty. <laughs> aside, so aside from the ribbon, though, it's it's kind of interesting to watch what's what's really been going on over there because it's it's a little I mean, I'm almost confused most of the time trying to keep up with what's happening. Um, with the different leaders that are being killed in the ground. I mean, it it almost reminds me of like World War II, you know, like there's this huge line across the country and we're constantly pushing it back and then it's getting pushed back towards us. And it's, I don't really know what's happening over there at the moment. And of course, we're probably not going to because most of what's happening is of course happening with, you know, special forces units and oh, things the like that. Squirrels. There I you love go. Calling them secret secret squirrels. squirrels. So we're yeah. not getting obviously all the information that's in it and drones and things. So we're not getting, I'm sure half of it, you know, is some classified information that we're not getting. So and we probably shouldn't get it. I don't think we should get I'm, everything. I'm not yeah. saying that we should. I'm just yeah. saying that we're not seeing the whole picture. So we can't really know what is, you know, what the situation truly is over there right now. And I think most of the people that are over there are probably, sort of in the old green zone, you know, kind of looking at the more strategic picture and not so much the tactical operations that are going on on the ground, you know, unless mm-hmm. they have that kind of clearance. So who knows? I mean, until, until this thing sorts, uh, sort of starts to maybe, I don't want to say blow up a more, but starts to expand a little more and we end up ramping up a little more, sending more soldiers, we'll probably start to get a more clearer picture of what's actually happening over there and what kind of ground we're gaining. And, and anyways, I kind of hope to find out soon, you know, I mean, there's, like I said, if there's a campaign ribbon, 
there's there's got to be soldiers to earn it. So, I mean, <laughs> yeah. so who knows who they'll be? And it's pretty. It has orange in it. I think it's so pretty. But um, anyway, so speaking of of soldiers, you know, um, being deployed and coming back, um, we just we just finished. We just completed um, Vietnam Veteran Day, which was yesterday, March 29th, and I was amazed when I woke up. I mean, you know, I'm on social media kind of a lot, probably too much, but, um, I woke up yesterday morning and I was like, Oh, I just loved it. You know, like my, my news feeds, you know, Twitter and Facebook specifically were full of like all this like Vietnam veteran support. You know, there's like all these images, imagery and quotes and news stories. And I was really excited because, you know, it's not a secret that they weren't treated very well when they came back. So, I mean, it's late, but I'm glad that they're feeling the love now. But still, though, here we are 50 years later, and it, it seems relevant to me to point out that this is, and it says here on this, I'll, I'll link to this USA Today article, unofficial observance uh-huh. of the withdrawal combat units from South Vietnam in 1973. So that means even still today, we don't, you know, we don't really have any type. It, it, and the article specifically talks about how these guys came home and they weren't, of course, there was no fanfare. There was no nothing. It was mostly them being spit on and beat up and and most of them felt like they had to hide who they were right they could you know that's why we have so many homeless veterans now most of them are vietnam veterans because they couldn't even get a job because they were looked down upon so horribly so here we are almost 50 years later and it's still an unofficial observance which you know it's it, it bugs me a bit you know i'm not i'm not someone who's like huge on we need to have like an official government holiday on this or for this or that or this or that. But I feel like really Vietnam veterans are the most underappreciated, you know, veterans that we have if, you know, if in, of any that are still living at this point and really of any that have ever existed in our country's yeah. history. <clears throat> and honestly, what they went through, as I've said before on the podcast, is, is, a, is a huge reason that we today aren't having to deal with the same thing they went through. Mm -hmm. They went through what they went through. And we look back on that now and say, what a horrible time for them. You know, how, how could a people, how could people have treated them this way? Especially these guys who were, who were drafted for the most part, they didn't even volunteer like we did. I know that's the, uh, that's the other big issue with Vietnam that I, I mean, um, that I, is like the sticking point for me. Um, not every single one of them had a choice. So the fact that they didn't have a choice and then they went and then they came back and they were treated horribly by American, you know, the public is blows me away. I mean, interrupt you, but that's the other major sticking point for me is just like, I don't know. I kind of feel like a lot of us today, well, I shouldn't say a lot of us, all of us today, you know, have volunteered. Right. So it's, it's kind of different. I mean, if the situation changes, right. You know, um, I mean, like I specifically, I joined because I love our country, not because I necessarily love, you know, POTUS, but I love our country, you know? So if something happens and I come back from where I'm going, if I ever even go anywhere, you know, and I'm treated (laughs) poorly, I kind of feel like, well, you know, it was my decision, but it wasn't the decision for everybody in Vietnam, so it's it's important to mention, I think. Yeah, and and what's what's really awesome about it, what's um what's amazing to me is is before we started actually recording this podcast, I was looking for a news source that, of course, I could link to 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 get you guys to the information. And as soon as I Google, I started Googling, you know, Vietnam, Vietnam, uh, basically like Vietnam Memorial Day, Vietnam. Veterans Day, that kind of thing. And almost everything was a local news website, right? I had a hard time finding sort of a national news outlet, which I I wanted to find a national news outlet so that it's um, sort of general information for everyone that may be listening wherever you are. So, but I thought it was amazing that all of this really started on the local level at the same time across the country. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's... That's pretty amazing to me that that so many people across the country have come together to to create this sort of ceremony, Memorial Day kind of thing for Vietnam veterans. And reading the article, it's talking about how, you know, more than 5,300 activities have been planned uh, for the date already going forward in the future. So it's pretty awesome that whether someone officially declares this a holiday or not going forward people plan to declare it a holiday on their own so i think that's amazing and i think that the veterans definitely deserve it because as i said they're the most underappreciated and probably went through far worse than many of us can even comprehend anyway so um, so they definitely deserve it and, and we're definitely thankful for everything they went through and everything they've done and and especially the suffering that they went through when they came home to their own country 
like I said, it's, it's, I think that what they went through is probably the reason that we don't have to go through it today. So I'm, I'm, I'm myself, I'm definitely uh, appreciative of that. Yeah, no, I know. I, and I agree completely. Um, I don't know, speaking about just like people and just the way the public reacts and treats people. Um, I don't remember. We were having a conversation about something this afternoon and I was like, yeah, love is like the hitch bot. And he was like, the what? And I was like, the hitch bot. I was like, remember the hitch bot last year? So I had to Google the story for him. And it occurred to me that there might be some people out there listening that may not have heard the hitch bot like my husband, because, you know, I'm the social, social media, you know, like nerd. Right. And he was pretty popular. So we figured we'd talk about hitch bot if you didn't remember him. I, I still feel really sorry for him. Like, I still want to cry for hitch bot. Yeah, so it, it kind of makes me a little sad to to talk about how this poor guy, this poor little robot, made it literally almost all the way around the world just to get back to the U.S. to meet its demise, right? I know, and he, like, met his demise in Philadelphia, which is, what, known for, like, the city of brotherly love, so <laughs> it breaks my heart. I mean, I, I know this isn't a news story, like, or new, like, new, you know, news story, but... I just wanted to bring it and of course you know I'll make my husband like share an article with you uh, but yeah this poor little guy he was like a social um, he was like a social you know experiment um, you know he was made by a couple people in Canada and you know he had this mission it was like the summer of 2014 and he had this mission of like where he was supposed to travel the world and um, he was I think he was adorable you know he's like he was like kid sized you know so he couldn't really walk around or anything and he was kind of like relying on the kindness of strangers so he would hitchhike and he had like facts in his little brain right um, you know embedded and he could talk and interact with you so the whole thing was like you know he would tweet and he would say you know st stuff like I want to go to Mount Rushmore and the whole idea was when he hit the U.S. he was going to hitchhike to different points you know and people were supposed to hitchhike and take him there and when he went to other countries it was beautiful like the you know Germany they even bought him a beer it was like so cute you know like people were following him I was following him and yeah he met his demise in Philadelphia what's really sad is his final tweet Oh, my God, even to this day still breaks my heart. It's just kind of like, well, you know, my trip is cut short now. Something to the effect of, you know, sorry, my trip is cut short because he was basically murdered. Oh, my you know? God. Does it, did it say that? Yeah. No, oh, you didn't see. You don't remember <laughs> no, this part. No. Yeah. So he was basically murdered. Um, like, they injured his body beyond repair, you know. So his final tweet was basically like, you know, my, my uh, something to the effect. I'll, I'll share it because I'm going to butcher the quote. But it was something like, you know, my I'm sorry, my my trip is cut short. But my love for humans will never fade. Bye, friends. I was like, oh, <laughs> even now I could think of, I could cry. Sorry, sorry. But poor, yeah. little, poor little guy. Yeah. So and then so kind of going from that, I mean, this poor guy, I mean, just just basically he was like a five gallon bucket with arms yeah. and legs and and he would just talk to people and they were just supposed to carry him to his next destination. And and he could, and we couldn't even accomplish that. <laughs> We couldn't even accomplish that. It's just regular human beings just trying to, you know, take part in this little More experiment. More specifically, Americans. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, so <laughs> Americans. So, and then um, the reason we looked back and found this is because I was talking to Tracy earlier about the... That's how it started. Yeah, I was talking to Tracy earlier about the Microsoft chatbot that that the, basically this AI software that Microsoft created and they basically put it on Twitter and what he was doing was essentially learning from people chatting, right? So he was reading all this uh, chatter going on on tweet on Twitter and he was supposed to be able to start interacting with the Twitter population with all his followers, which he had like 200,000 or something. And so this is only 200,000 followers, right? So it, it only took that small a percentage of the population to literally just fuck him up in the first place. <laughs> So as soon as he started interacting, it started interacting with the Twitter followers. It started to turn around and put out outrageous and racist tweets yeah. and shortly after endorsed Adolf Hitler. Yeah, that's that's what we are teaching artificial intelligence. And now this as far as this goes, we can't really I don't feel like we can blame this on Americans. I mean, it could be anybody, you know, this is Twitter, so it's international and. It was just basically um, 200,000 shitheads who, you know, got him to start thinking this way. So Microsoft immediately pulled him and was like, OK, um, let's let's uh, let's do a little tweaking, start this thing over. And they did. They started it over. 
And when they released him back onto Twitter, within no time, he was already talking about smoking Kush in front of the police. (laughs) (laughs) An artificial intelligent brain on Twitter started talking, bragging about smoking Kush in front of the police. So, man, it's a little depressing knowing that that's... You know, that's kind of where we're headed. I mean, yeah, well, you know, I've talked about it many times before in the podcast. And of course, you know, my husband, so, you know, I'm like obsessed with sci fi and like horror and everything. But sci fi specifically, you know, I'm always like, where is technology going? Because I definitely feel like there's a lot of messages right in sci fi that are like not even like so much 1984. I mean, though, that's pretty insignificant still, even in 2016. But I mean, there's like so many stories of like, I don't know, like Gattaca. I mean, there's just so much stuff out there like. Technology is going to reach a point, right? You know, kind of like what the Terminator where well, like computers are going to be. It's a serious philosophy and it's called the singularity. No, no, no. I understand that. But I'm just bringing it up just because, you know, I'm like a sci-fi fan. So my brain, whenever I hear stories about like poor Hitchbot, you know, or this poor chatbot, I always think about, God, we're living in that time literally right now where like there was that female robot like that I showed you the video the other day she looks so real and lifelike and she was creepy and she looked like she was going to come kill me <laughs> well, and right? She, and she even said something about what was it about killing the human race I don't know I'll- <laughs> she was creepy because she had like like crow's feet in her eyes like she looked yeah. real and she was creepy I don't know it's just interesting to me because I do think that we should uh, you know as a as uh, the human race we should definitely strive to improve ourselves and you know we should definitely strive you know to travel you you know, further than the moon and things like that. I mean, we should do that. You know, I think we should, you know, there's so many things that we can learn from it. Um, but and like even the technology, like we talked about, you know, a couple of podcasts ago with the bio skin and things like that. But yeah. I'm a little nervous for us too, because our empathy is just not where it should be. You are not kidding because honestly in the past, I would say in the past, at least the past year or so, um, just some of the podcasts I listen to, some of the people I kind of follow, Mm-hmm. There's been like a lot of chatter and talk about AI and the singularity and everything. And um, even like TED Talks and stuff, if you watch TED Talks at all, you know, there's like serious people in this field who are talking about it. And they're like legitimately concerned about what's going to happen when this AI really starts to kick in and move on. And at first I was like, you know, my, my first thought was like, oh God, come on, man. You know, I mean, seriously, how could something, you know, how could something move on to that point? You know, I mean, maybe something will become smarter than us, but how does that become a threat in some way? And, and stop, don't give me no Terminator reference. I was let me about finish to give my, you let Resident me, Evil. Let me, let me, let me finish my, my <laughs> train of thought here. But anyways, so I've, I, you know, I, when I was first hearing it, mm-hmm. you know, it, and you kind of you kind of have to have that I feel like you have to have that kind of skepticism, you know, and you when you hear someone talking about something, you know, of course you hear like all these conspiracy theories and your first start is like, oh come on, dude. You're seriously out of your mind. And but the more I've listened to it, the more I've heard about like all of these ethical issues that could be, you know, arising from artificial intelligence. I'm, I'm like, oh shit, man. I'm, Man, we might need to move to like a like an island or <laughs> like somewhere where something somewhere people don't care about. You know, definitely not where we live now, where we're like <laughs> locked in. Exactly. I mean, we would not survive. We're probably one of the least likely places to be able to survive in like a zombie apocalypse. I definitely don't want some computer coming after my ass. I mean, <laughs> I mean, you know, they might be able to swim. Who knows? <laughs> There's all the you know. It's like the Sharknado oh, threats. Sub- oh, oh my God. That's even worse. I thought you were going to say like nuclear submarines run by AI. No, you go straight for the Sharknado reference. Oh my, yeah. Well, that's a good place to end this podcast before it gets even more out of control. Yeah. I was going to talk about Resident Evil earlier, you know, just that, just that I think that the, it's interesting, you know, because as we we're talking about with, you know, AI and, you know, what we've taught this hitch bot, right? And what, what we've taught the chat bots, it just makes me think about, you the know, security, the security part of it. Yeah. And we just don't have the empathy, in my opinion, you know, um, I don't know. It's just interesting. I, I just, you know, I, I, you know, I'm definitely curious to hear, you know, everybody's thoughts out there of what they think, you know. Um, That's right. Do you think Skynet will take over? <laughs> Do you <laughs> 
<laughs> I mean, look, we've already passed the date. So we have. obviously John Connor we did have. something right. But <laughs> the question is, do you think they're going to take over? I don't know. I just think it's interesting. I know I'm being a little silly with the sci-fi movies, but a lot of these theories make sense to me. And they're based in legitimate like scientific theories. So I don't know. I just thought it was worth talking about. And then more importantly, I, d- I definitely want to hear everybody's thoughts out there. You know, if they think I'm being ridiculous, that's okay. You can let me know if you think I'm being ridiculous. Yeah, so if you do want to reach out to us, let us know what you think. Um, you can definitely email us to max at vetscafe.com. You can find us on Facebook, Veterans Cafe Podcast. Um, also, if you go to our website, vetscafe.com, we now have SpeakPipe on our website. That's so cool, by the which way. Which you can leave us a voicemail. I think we mentioned it already in the past, but you can leave us a voicemail on our website. Let us know what you think. We've already had a couple of voicemails come in, so... You leave us a voicemail, and if you want, go ahead and mention it in the voicemail, and we'll uh, put you on the podcast. You know, we'll, we'll, we don't mind sharing your message on the podcast. So let us know what you think about AI or, man, even the campaign ribbon. I mean, do you agree with Tracy? Is orange the right color, or <laughs> or do you think it should be a different color? I mean, I'm, I'm not really sh- Important things here. <laughs> <laughs> important topics so, to discuss further <laughs> so definitely head over to the vestcafe.com hit the speak pipe button if you're on your phone you're gonna have to download the app but if you actually do it on a desktop you can do it straight from your desktop and you can leave us a message let us know if orange is your color or not <laughs> other than that like i said you can email us you can find us on facebook thanks for listening to another episode of the veterans cafe podcast a big thank you to T Reed eight six nine three for the review on iTunes. We definitely appreciate that. And if you get the chance, head over to iTunes, give us a quick review, and don't forget to subscribe to the show. I'm Wes. I'm Tracy. And we'll talk to you next time. Bye. <laughs> Visit our website to join the conversation. That's vetscafe.com. V e t s c a f e dot com. <laughs>